Hi, my name is James Kyle and this is a tutorial on preloaders for my website at www.jameskyle.net I'm sort of stepping outside the, the the plan I had for these tutorials but someone on my course requested that I, I show them how to do this and I didn't really have time and I wanted to have a video for it at some point anyway so I'm jumping ahead of myself and I'm just going to demonstrate how you can set up a, a little graphic which will be displayed while your animation or your flash game or whatever it is you're made is taking a little bit of time to load so people will see this before it loads properly and it will let them know that their computer hasn't crashed something is meant to be here and not just an empty white box or whatever and you know they should wait because something's coming so what we're going to do is I'm just going to show you what I've set up first what I have here is a little bit of text that says now playing audio that is on the keyframe on the graphics layer I have a little bit of audio which again I've not covered but I will in future and I've just dragged, imported an mp3 file to my library and then dragged and dropped it onto this keyframe. I'm not going to cover how I did that or how to do you know, anything more fancy than that in any future tutorials, at least not for a while. I'm going to be concentrating on more sort of um, like graphic manipulation stuff using action script and whatever. On the first keyframe, on the actions layer, I have just a stop now, that's jumping ahead of myself because I won't need this this stop until I put in the preloader, but I'm putting it in just now anyway. So what I need to do here is I want to put some frames into the start of my timeline. I want to put just a single frame in front of each layer so that there's everything and everything that's part of the animation gets bumped up a frame everything gets bumped up to frame 2 so I could use insert layer insert layer, insert frame sorry and then just drag and drop keyframes onto that I could have just dragged and dropped them anyway it would have worked just fine you notice here I have on these layers three blank keyframes with the little white circles for blank keyframes so first of all I want to set up the graphic for my preloader so I will click on no loading graphic here in my library just drag and drop that onto the stage go down to its properties and just set them to 0 because zero, that will line up perfectly with the graphic on the second keyframe so it will sort of transfer seamlessly from the now loading to now playing and you can see I've thought of this but now what we need is a little bit of code and this is where the fun starts because the code is not code that I've covered in any previous tutorials so I'm going to have to go through everything and explain it line by line thankfully it's only five lines and it's all very simple on the first frame here we have in the blue text an if statement now the if statement is a conditional basically lets your computer decide between one outcome or the other, between one set of commands or the other based on a given set of circumstances. The circumstances that we have here inside the brackets of the if statement are frames loaded greater than or equal to total frames. So if the number of frames loaded are greater than or equal to the total number of frames then it will go ahead and do the piece of code within these sort of curly graphic curly brackets, I think they're called parentheses somebody will email me and correct me if I'm wrong please so go to and play and then inside the brackets for the go to and play we have frame 2 well the number 2, it refers to frame 2 after that we have an else statement which basically means otherwise go ahead and do the little piece of code inside this set of curly brackets so that means go to and play frame 1 now frame 2 as we know is the rest of our animation. Everything after frame 2, I mean you could have tons or like me you could have just frame 2, that's all you could have. But that will be when everything is loaded it will go ahead and play whatever's on that frame and if you've got a whole spiel of animation there that's brilliant. But if it's not loaded what we have here is a piece of code that says go to and play 1. Now that's these go to and plays just control the timeline so this will keep obviously this code is being called on the action on the first keyframe of the actions layer on frame 1 so this will keep it on frame 1 and every frame it will keep running this code and if it's not fully loaded 
it will keep staying at frame 1. <laughs> That's all it will ever do. So, we're going to go ahead and test this, just to demonstrate that it works. Now, if I go to File, go into the File menu, obviously I'm using the Mac version, so the File menu will be at the top of your window, if you're using Windows, or at the very, very top of the screen if you're using Mac OS X. I want to preview this in Flash because previewing it in Flash gives me some more options to play with. I can actually simulate a download which will show me what it would be like for the user if they're downloading at any given speed. I can specify the speed of the simulated download so I can test to see if how fast it would download if I was using, say, like myself, an 8 megabyte connection or if I was trying to download it through dial-up. And that is pretty slow. So here we go. It says here, now playing audio, Cathor can I see. Now as you know, that was frame 2 on our animation. That's after the preloader. So we didn't really get a chance to see the preloader, so I'm going to bring up... I'll have to zoom out to use this here, actually. There we go. Bring up my Flash Player. If I go to the Flash Player's view menu, and choose download settings. I'm going to switch this to 56k just to see what this would be like downloading on the 56k modem. It's pretty high quality audio even though I earlier I reduced it from what it was. I click on simulate download and you'll see here it now says now loading audio cat or can I see and it has a little rotating stick that I put in earlier just to show that you know it's not just static text it has a little bit of animation to show your computer's not frozen up, it's not locked, it's not broken, it will come and you will like it. Obviously if I'm simulating this at 56k, that's going to take forever. Go to download settings, I'll change it to Kelo's broadband. 8 megs. And I've got to simulate download. It just does it instantly because it's super quick and the file size isn't so large that I would need a preloader with my connection. Preloaders, if you've got a file size that's even you know maybe half a meg or something stick a preloader in someone somewhere will try and dial up to it you know try and access it on a god awful connection and otherwise they'll never get to see it maybe they don't deserve to living in their back country waters with their <laughs> preloader with their dial up internet and their bloopy dial up modems but, you know inclusive internet so yeah that's basically it the main thing you have to remember is just copy and paste in the code, change the frame numbers if you need to, but if you're having everything on frame 1 and frame 2, just thereafter you shouldn't really need to. And make sure you've got a stop if you've got nothing after frame 2, because otherwise it'll jump back to frame 1 and show off your preloader again, and although it's probably brilliant, nobody wants to see it twice. So yeah, preloader, a little bit of code on frame on the actions layer, a little bit of code on the graphics layer, that's all you really need. That's exactly as simple as it is. That's 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 all you need. All you need to remember is just to bump up every single layer on the scene that you're putting the the preloader onto. Up a frame. Everything. Even if you don't think you need to, just put everything up a single frame and then put in your graphic, put in your code, that's it. What I'm not covering today is how to do the little percentage meters because a little bit of maths involved there, I'm not going to touch on it just yet. I'll do that when I get on to sort of working with maths in Flash. Oh, sounds glamorous, but you will need it if you're going to be doing any sort of fancy animation. So I'm just going to stop here and I will let you go ahead and try that. I will put a link to the tutorial, which I am basically cribbing a bit. And, you know, lots of tutorials on there on that website too, but don't forget my website, please! Come back, I'll be posting more tutorials regularly, hopefully. Maybe not as regularly just now because I've got a lot of university stuff on, but I'll keep it up and lots more to come. Oh, yes, before I finish, I should state that this tutorial only pertains to Action Script 2. Just trying to get back on track with the, the logical flow. As I say, I mean, I've only just got Flash CS3, so I won't be covering a lot of CS3 stuff if I can help it until I get really get to grips with it. So, yeah, come back regularly, see what I've got. Thanks very much, and goodbye.